Blog Talk Radio. Hello! <laughs> it is Sunday, October 8th, 2017. School is officially in! I don't know. <laughs> I don't get it. I don't get it. The volume went down. That's a rolling. That's a rolling joke. <laughs> Every week is our intro is insane. Okay. Um, <laughs> welcome to the Schools and Podcast. I am Mitch, and as always, I am joined by my two illustrious co-hosts, um, the hip hop and body rocking ant. What up? What up? <laughs> And um, the pop thing and locking, Aaron. I don't know if Aaron pop locks. <laughs> yeah, I do a little, I do a little popping. Really, you know, Nas yeah. used to 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 do that. He used to do a little b boy, and, and he called himself Kid Waves back in the day. Oh yeah, yeah, I do remember hearing something about that. Yeah, right. Common does right. too, doesn't he? Right. Common, I think. Yeah. That makes sense because a lot of people were b boying back when I was a kid. Everybody was into it. You just it's funny. You know, you, it's funny that you it's funny that you say that because it seemed like people from that generation more so like they always like when they talk about hip hop, they it seemed like they always wanted to be everything. I was a, I was a graph artist. I was a, I used to do yep. a little bit of this before I started rapping. I used to do everything. I was a, I was the whole. But thing. when you watch Wild Style, a lot of them, a lot of those graph artists also are b boys and they break into rhyme all the time. Mm-hmm. Like they were doing a lot of different parts of the aesthetic. They weren't f- focused necessarily just on one. Mm. So, so welcome to our second segment on um, our elements of hip hop. We're on the second element today. We're doing um, b boying and breaking, but it also encompasses just all hip hop dance style. Period. Because you can't really talk about b-boying without talking about a lot of the other hip-hop styles that kind of got incorporated into b-boying that weren't originally part of breaking. So, we're going to talk about two different codes, starting with New York, because New York is pretty much... was the episode... And as we talked about last week... Um, the breakers or the B boys were inspired by the breaks that they heard at Cool Herc's party. And actually, Crazy Legs were saying that he said if they went kind of nuts, like when they, when when they heard the breaks, they would dance even you know more fiercer and like it would like in, energize them mm-hmm. more. So, um, break. Breaking or um, b-boying actually started with blacks and Latinos, in mostly in the Bronx. There were some styles that were going on in different boroughs like Brooklyn, but most people remember the Bronx more for it, just because of what we were talking about with Cool Hurt and the break. So at first they used to call it rocking, which a lot of the, what they call up rock comes mm-hmm. from. Mm-hmm. So. Um, up rocking is a is a part of of hip hop dancing and also part of breaking. Up rocking is like that thing you see before when the um the dancers battle and they're like facing each other and they start doing all these crazy hand gestures where they're and they're called jerks and burns and they're like pretending to like cut your opponent's head off and that kind of stuff. That's that's yeah. all up rock. It's all about battling, and that stuff started. All these dances, including the West Coast and East Coast, started about the late seventies. Sorry, late sixties, early seventies. And up rocking was what gangs would do to each other. I mean, can you imagine 
gang members like on the corners up rocking each other instead of fighting? <laughs> I mean, I imagine, I imagine, it no story type of shit. I ma- I imagine it was like you know, just like another another version of throwing up a gang sign. So, but I mean, it's better. It, it didn't always get violent. Like, I mean, yeah. yeah, and I yeah. mean, it it kind of kept you from getting violent though. Yeah, but that's what it's I mean, like the cool. alternate version. Yeah. So, I mean, that's kind of, that part of it to me is cool. Mm-hmm. Like, instead of, like, everybody thinks this shit is corny now, of course. But to me, I think it's cool that they replaced, you know, fighting and stabbing each other with uprock. <laughs> like, like, I'll pretend to stab you while I dance. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, that's would they, would they escalate? Would they ever escalate into... Sometimes it, it, it escalated, unfortunately. Their instances. Yeah, I ain't surprised about that. I imagine That'd they be- were quite intense. Yeah. It, I mean, I'm sure it got ugly, but I mean, for no, the most rap, part. Rap battles, rap battles get that intense sometimes nowadays. <laughs> yeah. But um, breaking is, is, is breaking in B-Boy is an athletic street dancing, and the, the components of it um, are top rocking, down rocking, power moves, and freezes. And with the up rock kind of being a part of that first part of it, like before we dance, we up rock first, you know, and then you kind of break out on the, the floor, like, you know, or, or wherever you are. Because back in the day, we didn't always have like a real dedicated place to do it. Like if you were at the park, you just threw, you know, your grandma's um, box that you broke down from her washing machine and you put some tape down on it and you just started b-boying. <laughs> you know? Yep. So, um, top rocking is like the foot m- movement that you perform from a standing position. And top rocking can incorporate all different kinds of different styles and that's where the kind of blending of the different styles from LA come in because you could be lending you could be you could be doing popping or locking in there as well and all that stuff is from different origins it's not originally part of the breaking or b-boying style but that that part of it is very flexible and it's very interpretive so you can draw anything you want into that um, the da- yep, the down rock is gonna go together. So the down rock is all floor based footwork, and you like doing that with your hands and your feet. So, like the wind mm-hmm. down rock, and like I say the windmill because most people are very they're they they know the windmill if they don't know yeah. shit else. <laughs> they know the windmill and they know that power move of like the head spin. Everybody knows that. Mm-hmm. So like so, so the next one is the power move, which is an um athletic or acrobatic element. And I don't know if you guys remember from the last from last week. They were talking about how they or from watching Wild Style. Not Wild Style, excuse me, but um Style Wars. They integrated the athletic moves a little bit later. Like that wasn't always part of the traditional breaking. Like they kind of brought that in. But some of the power moves are spins you do, the the, the handstands, floats, swipes, windmills, and flares. And um, the freezes are the last part. And that's the integral part because you see them freezing a lot and they always freeze on a place that it's like a hard part for you to hold. Yeah. Really like holding your body in the air or, or like like windmill freezing or like on your head freezing. Right, what's that about? That's just part of it. You know, it's like, it's like showing that you, I mean, cause you have to be really athletic to do all this shit. Yeah, I'm I'm I imagine so if you couldn't do it, if you couldn't do it, you was trash. 
Get him out of you here. You know what? I used to get scared that people were going to fuck up, like, their heads. Like, you could be trying to do a, a fucking head spin and just really fuck yourself up. Mm-hmm. That's why they say that's what was important, practice and battling. Yeah. Well, they used yeah, to go in the bed, you know. <laughs> you really did. But, um, so that's, that's all in New York style. And if you want to know of all those styles from New York, you can do like the, the, the two crews that are the, the best known are the Rocksteady crew, which is the one everybody knows. Everybody knows Crazy Legs. That's, mm-hmm. that's everybody. And the New York City Breakers are the two most prevalent. You know, so if you want to find out more, you can just, you know, go there and go to YouTube, go to go to the internet. It's all out there. And you can see some, you know, really legit dance moves. Um, do not, however, go to the movies Breaking 1 and 2 and think you're going to see some breaking. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, that's the other reason why we had to... It is misleading. You know, it's weird that nobody talked about that at the time, either. Except for the dancers. I guess people... I guess... I guess certain people just uh, assumed that everybody knew the difference. No, I think they didn't know the difference either. Mm. You know what I think happened, Aaron? I actually really think that what happened was breaking was popular. But people weren't as familiar with the terms of L.A. funk dancing. Mm. And And if you had said... Like, who was going to the movies to see popping and locking? Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when like when breaking was popular. Right. So you got to throw the term. You, so you got so you got to throw the term that's popular on top of it. Guys. Exactly. Like who's going to see popping and locking? Nobody. Right. Right. <laughs> breaking just rolls off the tongue. Well, at the time, breaking was the, you know, it was, it was the mid 80s and it was at its height, at its zenith. And that's what everybody oh, wanted to see. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, on, and on every news outlet, they was like those break dancers. Oh. Like <laughs> <laughs> the 2020 izing of fucking breaking your fire <laughs> Oh my god, every time that shit hit a news outlet, you were like, oh my god, please yeah. stop saying break dancing, please. I hate when I hate when news outlets do shit like that. They're like, gangster rapper, soldier boy. Shit like that. Like, <laughs> <laughs> do they know that, that soldier boy is neither a gangster or a rapper? <laughs> I'm just, I, think, I think they do. I'm, I I'm just do. using that as an example. I'm just using that as an example, but you know how they be. They be doing that shit on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> mm. I can't. But no, they did. They like that pissed people to fuck off. So I mean, by the time you get to like eighty three, eighty four, though, you got that that shit I sent y'all with Alfonso Ribeiro teaching you how to make shit b boy. <laughs> Mm-hmm. You know, it's like I will teach you brick dancing in these ten easy steps. Hey, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> shit, by today's standards, he a be boy though. So, um, pretty much. <laughs> I, I, I hate to say that, but shit, he's a b boy more than those some people now. Well, once that, once b boying. I guess went as far as it could. It just kind of died down and burned out. We still, so we still got dancers out there in some effect, but not exactly b boys. It's not what it used. To, I mean, it's underground. Yeah. Almost all these art forms, except for in seeing, have all gone underground. So if you go to certain countries, you can see that. Right. Shit. Right, exactly. Like I think that, like we was watching in the chaos video, um, we was watching the superstar. Um, I think that that was like you know like footage of like stuff that go on around that area. Mhm. Yeah, Canada, France, yeah. Japan, anywhere in Asia, really. Strange, this is strange big. to me. <laughs> Germany, Why? Apparently, huh? Because everybody Germany, else is yeah. embracing embracing our roots except us. 
Well, Americans are faddish, Aunt. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately. All we like is the new new. Yeah. People new, do. New, I've, new. I've noticed. I've noticed that people do put more like you know they take more care of stuff that don't belong to them a lot of times. Like certain people don't. We ain't gonna talk about them though. But uh, yeah, it seems like yeah. uh, people people take better care of stuff that don't belong to them. Like uh, I think about like the whole like Japanese culture. Like that's becoming like more of a thing now with like people our age. Yeah. yeah. That's true. Oh, you know what Crazy Legs was talking about too? It was every documentary I was saying, watching what he was talking about. He said they used to, they got a lot of their moves from James Brown and Kung Fu. Mm hmm. <laughs> cool. I was like, oh, that's cool. <laughs> that's what's up. <laughs> I was like, yeah, we gotta hit my moves up. I gotta watch James Brown and some enter the enter the drink. That's weird. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it's like you figure. You okay? Okay, you figure. Um, <laughs> you figure. You know, like hip hop influences. You know, come from a lot of different places but you see the same things repeated over again because you know Wu-Tang was also influenced by Kung Fu right and James, Br- and James Brown to some extent and James Brown to some extent yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep yeah it's kind of funny like could you imagine explaining that to a regular person that don't they do like how does the two go together <laughs> 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 what one got to do with that's that? Why it's called, well, that's why it's called innovation. Mm. And, and they've never heard of um, Kung Fu Electric Boogaloo? I don't understand. Yeah, Kung some Fu people Electric Boogaloo was a thing. <laughs> I'm sorry. It isn't a thing. I made that up. <laughs> <laughs> but it goes together. Kung Fu Electric that Boogaloo. Becomes, that becomes a teachable moment. <laughs> Kung Fu Electric Boogaloo goes hand in hand though. Sure, why not? And cereal. They have an integrated <laughs> cereal, and that really would have been like a, like a trifecta. So, um, <laughs> we'll go to um, so much. There's my bell. So, um, <laughs> really fast, um, <laughs> out to lunch, I think we decided, um, was all the stupid moonwalk people, right? Michael Jackson did not invent <laughs> the moonwalk. First of all, it's not called the moonwalk. I mean, in that particular incarnation, it's not called that. That's, that's true. What was that it's, actually called, it's actually called the backslide. Yep, it's called the backslide, and it is a popping move. It is one of the moves of popping. It's been around for a while, too. A long time. It's been around for a long time. Like Cab Calloway was doing that shit back in the day. And Mike just made it look cooler. He popularized it. Calloway. Yeah. I mean, he did make it look cool. He did it he very just, well. He just <laughs> made it widespread. Like, you know, and for those who don't know, who, because I keep forgetting some people are too young to even know what Michael Jackson did. On on the Motown 25 special mm-hmm. that aired, and back then everybody watched shit like that. Like, you were glued to the television when it came on. So, the Motown 25th anniversary special came on and Michael Jackson performed Billie Jean and he was dancing and he stopped in the middle of his dancing routine and he did the backslide aka what he deemed the moonwalk across the stage and everybody was like oh my god 
crowd goes wild. But we have enough evidence now to, you know, like we have YouTube. Don't be lazy. Right. I was watching <laughs> um I was watching uh this one video um on YouTube. They was talking about how Mike got the uh he got the robot from one time he was uh on Soul Train. He was watching Soul Train or whatever. Yep. And he um. Uh, he just started doing, you know what I'm saying? He started doing a robot and shit. And like, you know, you know how it is. It's because Mike doing it, you know what I'm saying? Which I'm not, I'm not completely mad at. I think we can all agree that like, you know, you don't, it's nothing to get mad at. It's just that, you know, when you got people that don't know any better, that's just like, you know, oh, this is where it comes from. Mike did it all. Right. Like, right. Like, no, he, it doesn't come from that. Like, Mike definitely right. did not start that. <laughs> He didn't start the robot either, but everybody was like, now nah, I'm gonna say something though. Mark fuck Mike fucking killed the robot. <laughs> Mike used to like you couldn't tell he fucking wasn't a robot. <laughs> like when you when he did that shit, it was like that shit was done. It was like, damn. Again, that, that's he, did a damn well. he, he did that shit to fucking death. Like if you watch him in any video with his brothers during the song Dancing Machine. Dancing Machine. It was appropriately named too. <laughs> yep. <laughs> like with like right in the middle when it when it breaks out, go dun, 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 and he starts doing the robot. You're like, yo, what the? That fool is fucking. He's he's, he's energetic. He's animatronic. What is he doing? Damn. Cause I mean. The, the robot is also part of the, the funk dances. Because, see, they were out in California, which is a good segue right. to our next segment. Because they were out in California. So all these dances by that time in their career that Mike is seeing, he's seeing it out in California where they originated. Like, he's, you know, watching Soul Train. He's watching, yeah. um, uh, what's his name, from Shalimar, Jeff and Jody. Yep. Yep. That's who it was. Yep. Mhm. It was. It was. Um. Uh. Jeff. Oh my. Jody Watley and. Oh my God. What was Jeff's last name? Oh, uh, I can't think of Jeffrey's last name right now. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> but he used to do. On Soul Train, all the Soul Train dancers were doing them. He was good at them too. He also went on to Top of the Pops over in England and was doing the backslide a year before Michael Jackson even debuted that. How about that? Mm-hmm. Oh, Jeffrey Daniel. Jeffrey Daniel is his, is, is his name. Mm-hmm. All right. Yep. Yep. They actually started, they both started, Jody Watley and Jeffrey Daniel started um, dancing on Soul Train. Prior to being in Shalimar, the group Shalimar. Mm-hmm. Yep, and they were they were good at. It. He still is, is a, a dancer, dancing all over the place. And Jeffrey Daniel also choreographed a good deal of Michael's work in the eighties and nineties because of that. Yeah, it's always nice to hear it when stuff like that take like flight. Like when you know you was just like started off as like some local dancer or whatever, and next mm-hmm. thing you know you you know what I'm saying you become like head choreographer or whatever. Mm-hmm. Kind of dope. I always like that kind he of was, stuff. He was also married to your girl Aaron for a little while. Who? Stephanie Mills. Oh yeah. Yeah. Interesting name, but... for a very short while. <laughs> And they got divorced. And of yeah. course, Jeff and Joey uh, used to be together, like you know, years before that. They were together when they were dancing on the show. But um, yeah, so everybody who keeps talking about the moonwalk, it's, you know, yeah, it's lovely. It's lovely. Call it the backslide and go look it up. Yeah, people know what they they know what they seen on TV. It's interesting. Like I'm I, I'm starting to wonder, like you know who who our general audience is because like I feel like all of us are old enough to remember like at least when people were still like trying to move like the people we seen on TV like you yeah. trying to figure uh-huh. out how to do like what you seen some motherfucker do on TV like that was the thing like but I feel like you know people that's like younger than us they wouldn't even they don't even understand the concept of it. Like, they don't 
they don't even get that. I mean, they they, they got they got their own little dances and things that they all do. I mean, like I mean, do they watch Chris Brown and try to dance exactly. like him on videos yeah, uh, or something? Sometimes, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you look at the little kids, they all do that. Where That's little what the kids do. Where they, kids they, they do that. up in the air and they hook it and then they walk backwards or some shit like that. You know, they all do that uh, little dumb shit. Oh, that's, that, like, that, 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 that's that's dope. <laughs> Yeah, it, it changed. I don't. It's, it's still, it's still <laughs> I there. Yeah, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't mad at it. I ain't mad at it completely. Yeah, me either. But I don't know. But I mean, you guys are right. It isn't the same. Yeah. It's different. It's like it's like me remembering. I remember buying every Nas album I've ever bought. Yeah. I remember the day I went to buy it, and I remember what I was doing before I got there. I, I remember why I was going on that day. I re- like I remember everything about that. I tried mm-hmm. to go buy a hard copy of um, Layla's Wisdom and couldn't find it nowhere. Yeah. Where did that shit online though? <laughs> it wasn't on. It wasn't online nowhere. <laughs> not the hard copy. It's not on Amazon. I couldn't find it when I looked. I looked when it came out. Man, I'm about to go find it. I'm about to go look for it now. I waited a while. I couldn't find no like, hard copy so nowhere. Why would Rhapsody be on Amazon though? <laughs> right. It was on there digitally. I couldn't find no hard copies though. Like I actually That's insane. To, yeah, record stores looking for it. Yo, this is not cool, man. Yeah, I was so disappointed. Like, like what if I don't fucking <laughs> want it digitally? Damn it. Right. I was so disappointed. <laughs> Rock Nation can afford hard, hard copies. Huh? You said Rock no, Nation can't afford hard copies. Uh, I guess, I Let guess not, up. man. Is it Rock Nation's <laughs> fault? Hard, hard copies must don't move like they used to. It they is their fault because, 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 uh, Beauty and the Beast not on Rock Nation, and that's it's hard copies for that. <laughs> I know, I seen them. <laughs> oh, okay, so, so, so that's your logic, huh? <laughs> makes sense. I will. Let me see the yeah. We are old school. Like I want to read liner notes. Uh, <laughs> but see, that's because nowadays, like, even if you do get a hard copy or something, a lot of them don't have like, like real liner notes for them to do. Oh no, I don't know what you get. My shit got liner notes. Depends on what you buying. Like that last, like the last Sean Price joint I bought is just a CD case. It's like the, you know one of those like little slim case joints. Oh, what the hell is that about? Right. I'm not buying a CD. You need to get a fucking case. What the hell? I thought I had a box set or whatever. Um, it probably do now since he died. But when I got it, he was still alive. I got that uh the Mike Tyson drum. Oh, did you talk about the last last drum? Oh no, not that one. I got um the last right. the last drum price drum I bought was Mike Tyson. Okay, yeah. let's bring it back from lunch. All right. And uh, so you know, lunch was a good segue. Let's let's bring it on over to Cap. On to the West Coast, from the East Coast to the West Coast. Let's go. The reason why we're going to the West Coast to talk about hip hop dancing is because people get the. B boying and breaking confused with the dances on the West Coast, which are all called funk styles, which were created by Black Americans in California, and they are referred into locking, as sorry, excuse me, as locking, roboting, as we were just talking about with Michael Jackson, boogaloo, and popping, and collectively those are known as the funk styles of dance, which fit into the hip-hop aesthetic because as we talked about last week hip-hop is a derivative of funk music so the funk style dances like the ones in new york and the ones in california go with our style of music we have funky music we have funky dances so the first one is popping and as I stated earlier, that dance 
the quote unquote moonwalk, which is actually called the backslide. Right. That is that is an element of popping. Popping is also a street dance. It was created in California in the late sixties, early seventies. Um in Fresno, California. It is a street Fresno. dance. Yep, shout out to Fresno. It's a street dance that was um done by quickly um like constricting and then relaxing your muscles to cause your body to jerk. And they call that a pop or a hit. Right. Okay, so when you enter, a lot of times they would integrate popping with other dances like the robot or like with tutting or other kind of dances. And the person who pops is called a popper. And do not confuse popping with locking either. They're very different and we'll get to that in a second. Yeah, that part kind of messed me up. I was, I was reading that shit. You know what? When I got older, I was like, wait a minute. It's not called Pop Lock? Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, the next dance, or the, a style of popping, basically, is called the Boogaloo, and it's mixed with the popping, and it's a loose and fluid style um, of the street dancing, and it gives the impression of the body like not having any bones in it and it's in, it, it, it was inspired by like animation and cartoons mm-hmm. uh, the um the best place to see demonstrations of popping and that whole style like the food style is the electric boogaloo that is a boot that encompasses the man who created popping and boogaloo. He's incredible with that because his family, Solomon, his brother, popping Pete, is the one that is known most for that dance style. He was in the electric boogaloo, and you still see him now, like he was in a Chris Brown video. If you look up his name, Poppy P has been in everything. He's been doing this shit for years and years and years. Like his name ring the bell in California. He's still doing it too. Poppy P was actually, um, <laughs> he was in Breaking too, as well. He was in what? He was in Breaking too, too. He was in the movie as well. Who, who was? Hello? Yeah. Pop and Pete. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. And he also worked with Michael Jackson for like almost two mm-hmm. decades. So, you know, Mike picked out the best people. It was like, that motherfucker right there can dance. We need him. So it wasn't just, Mike. Like, everybody thinks it's just Mike was great. Michael also picked out people who were great to work with him. Yeah, that's all. Yeah, that's always important. That's what I say about that's what I say about the music in general too now. Like uh like people always talk about like how uh music was better back then, but it was better back then because people didn't people didn't like, you know, work with people that didn't know what they were doing. True. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, like true. yeah, so for you to get for you to get like, you know, the dance genius that, you know, that we call Michael Jackson, like he gotta be working with people that, you know, that are yeah that are extremely influential who are extremely mm-hmm. talented yep right another place for you to see a popper is um if you watch breaking you will see pop and Pete. you will also see michael boogaloo shrimp aka well chambers michael boogaloo shrimp chambers aka turbo so mr i dance with a broom Mr. I dance climb, around the whole room. <laughs> climb on the ceiling and shit. Climb on the ceiling. That turbo when he was a popper. Oh, like he was official in real life. Yep. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. That's just, uh, he was. Look, he remember that part in um specifically in one of your shows, Aaron, that you like. Remember in uh, Family Matters when that Urkel bot was like that was Michael Chambers inside of that suit. Oh wow! <laughs> inside, of that, inside of that Urkel suit, popping and dancing. Yep. And he's out there too. He's still out there. He's been out there. Oh, okay. 
Yep. Um, so the other form is locking. And locking is like a freeze move. So you like so you go from freezing into a fast movement and then you lock in that particular position and you hold it and then you move back into the, the into the dance that you were in at, at your previous beat. So I used to always, as you said, would get them mixed up together. Right, right. And thought that popping and locking was the same. Like when we were young, we used to just call it pop locking. <laughs> but yeah, exactly. That's what, I thought that's what everybody called it. Is. Yeah, no, it's not. It's popping and locking. It's complete two completely different, and it's two completely different groups of people who are known for that shit. But can't you like incorporate the two anyway? Yeah, you can. And you incorporate breaking into all of this shit too. Like all of this, this these funk styles of dance get, got thrown into into breaking and and b boying too. As I was saying, like mm. like when you're up rocking, when you're up rocking, you do whatever. You know, so when you're doing your foot work, standing up, people throw all kind. They throw the boogaloo in. They th- they throw everything from the West Coast in with their stuff from the East Coast. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's why. Mm-hmm. Um. So locking was actually created by mistake by Don Campbell, and he's from Los Angeles. And how he created it is he was dancing and he was attempting to do the funky chicken. <laughs> is that the guy that they uh, that uh they were talking about like wearing the like strange outfits and shit? The lockers used to wear some pretty wacky outfits here. Yeah. Right, like like, like yeah. really crazy. Mm-hmm. And um and he was trying to do a funky chicken and then he started doing it and he couldn't remember what the next move was. So he just froze. <laughs> and then he kind of went into the next move and then everybody was like, oh, that shit is fresh. Well, not fresh, but you know. <laughs> Whatever <laughs> words they used at the time. And it was like, okay, I got something here. He just started doing it. And then um, he created a crew with guess who? This is the craziest thing because you wouldn't think any of these people created the group called The Lockers. And the group that he created was with Tony Basil, the one who did Hey Mickey. Mm. If you go onto YouTube, you'll see footage of Tony Basil in the locker. And she's in that group. Like, this is the 70s. So you'll see them all over different programs in the 70s. Right. Soul Train and. Like um, midnight special, just like doing this stuff. And guess who else was in the lockers? Who? Fred Rerun Barry. Oh wow! Yeah, I'm not surprised about it at all. <laughs> yep, and he of course you know went on to be on What's Happening, but he was a locker. Yeah. But he w- he would be locking on a TV show. You would see him doing it. Exactly. That's what I said. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> yep. right. yeah, not surprised. Mm-hmm. That's um. Yeah, that's kind of interesting. Like, you know, like, when you explain all that stuff, it's like, you know, hip-hop was already incorporating itself in, like, other aspects of entertainment before yep. it became yep. an actual thing to do so. So, that's kind of yep. that's kind of cool. It is dope, because, but it, it made sense for them to integrate because they all had the same basis of funk. Mm-hmm. Because all the, all the, the, the popping and the lacking was done to funk music. And so was the breaking and the, and the b-boy. Right. And. Where Ant go? I don't know. Um, and so one of the, oh, one of the last important members of the lockers was Adolfo. Quinones, aka Shabadu, <laughs> aka Ozone from Breaking. Oh, yeah. so, when you watch, so when you watch Breaking, what you have is not really 
break dance, like breaking or what they call break dancing. You, what you had was a popper and a locker. As we said before, in a movie called Breaking, which was funny, but we didn't. And realize. I guess, and I guess, I guess, but being actual dancers and knowing the difference, um, they figured you know incorporating the two like that would be cool. I guess. Be, well, part of it too is because they were on the West Coast. Mm. I just like I now find the whole thing just hilarious because Breaking is a, a West Coast sorry I mean sorry is an East Coast phenomenon you know because of the East Coast dances and popping and locking is a is you know is a California you know thing but we actually had a movie that was made and none of us really saw it like we didn't get it at first Yo. Yo. Y'all hear me? All right, cool. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what happened. Well, what? it happens to us all, apparently. <laughs> yeah, it sucks. I can still hear y'all, so I ain't missing nothing. Cool. Yeah, we're just talking about how Tony Basil used to be a um, be in the lockers. The locker. She used to be in the group, the lockers. Tony Basil yeah. and rerun and and Ozone from Breaking. Yeah, I heard I heard everything. <laughs> I didn't know y'all hey. couldn't hear me. <laughs> no, oh no, we did. <laughs> All right. So, you know, it was very interesting time. I think that like I was saying earlier, I think that that was just a matter of marketing. Yeah. Cuz like nobody really knew the forms or like knew that there were a there was like a different name for the forms of hip hop dance in California. They just kind of assumed that that shit was all under the um B boying. So when you saw it you didn't necessarily question it because you were like, oh okay they're doing hip hop you know they're doing hip hop dances. No. But there was no actual breaking in it. Which seems weird now, but not at the time. Yeah. <laughs> they were up rocking though, like like doing their little battles at the you know like when Ice T had the mic and he was like you know <laughs> when he was spitting his angry you know Ice T rhyme. Yeah. Uh-huh. When they were at the parties and stuff for breaking one and two, they would be up rocking like you know, they would get up and into the spaces and start up rocking. So there's that. That's more authentic. It was easier to sell it as breaking. Yeah. Definitely. 100%. Get more people. Get more people involved. Well, not involved, but, you know, seeing it, watching it, paying for it. True. Um. So. Well, well, during my time period, all that shit had gone away by then. And it was the same with the like like the the whole thing like the the DJ. Yeah. It was more like a backdrop to the MC, so you would see you would see your little DJ in the back, and you would see a, a, a little two man hip hop dance duo. So you know if you check the old videos, like EPMD or like like they all had like you know Big Daddy had hip hop dancers, Scoop and Scrap. Um, MC Light had leg one and leg two, which I think were her cousins. Yeah. Heavy D had um, T Roy and um, may he rest in peace. Trouble T Roy and uh, oh my god, what was the other one's name? See, the first thing that goes when you get old is your mom. <laughs> 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 oh, I that. Huh? I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> <laughs> it does though. I can't remember the other. I can't remember the other boy. Hold on. What the hell? Heavy D and the boys. We all remember T Roy because he passed away. Yeah. 
I remember his DJ because he's a producer, but for some reason I can't remember. Trouble T Roy and G Wiz. Yeah, he's the lesser known boy, apparently. That's your name, man. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, but yeah, oh, Eddie F is Edward Pharrell is Eddie F. Yeah. He was <laughs> Glenn Parrish. I'm looking at here. Yeah. Um, but you know, we had our little two man dance crews, you know. And they weren't exactly, they weren't b boying or anything, but they were, you know, like doing the dances of the day. Uh huh. Pop it, and they would kind of incorporate some stuff. That's what hip hop is the dances got. And then after the, the golden era went, it all went. Like, there's no more dancers left. Unfortunately. Unfortunately. Yeah. These shows, are, you know what? I'm supposed to be happy during these shows. These shows are making us depressed. I know. I don't, I don't, <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> Somebody gotta do it. Gotta get excited. We do well, this you know what? We, love All right, we do this because we love hip hop and we want to document the culture. Because it's not always for the best. Be but yeah, not the worst. Not the worst like some other people doing right now. Uh, let's man. let's not even go there, man. <laughs> I can't get over it though. <laughs> he was serious. Yo, Mura's your time is coming. It like I think we're gonna out to lunch that asshole during during the MC during the MC yeah. elements show. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I have no objections to that. <laughs> Ooh, it gotta be a double header. It gotta be a double header. Oh, who else gets it? Who else gets it? Your, your boy Joe. Oh God. You've been meaning to get back to him. You've been meaning to get back to him. What better time than the MC show? That's true. I concur. What better time to get Joe the MC show? That fucking comment about female MCs. Oh yeah. Rhapsody yeah. on Joe. Invite Rhapsody on, please. That'd be interesting to see. Joe was a bell MC. How would he not? He knows women that get in these ciphers and eat you and spit you out. What is he talking about? <laughs> I, I don't even think he even thought about what he was saying until he said it. Come on, man. Well, he kind of, I don't know, he kind of re- went back on his statement about the whole uh, chance being too positive, too. What did he say? Well, he basically was saying, "Oh, I would, It was a. It was a joke. And anyone who wanted to take it seriously can eat a dick, basically." Uh, how about you eat one for us, Joe? How about you do it? You know what? This whole fucking trolling culture. Yep, that's that's the worst part about all of this. Because <laughs> you never know, like when somebody's sitting up here and they like, if they doing it for the likes, they doing it for the money, or they serious. Like you never know. I don't think. You know what? I think half the time they are serious and then they claim they're trolling when it doesn't work out the way they want it to. See, but that's what makes it so disgusting to me because that's you can do that now because of the whole... Yep. <laughs> because of how it's set up. It's like, you can sit there and be like, oh, well, uh, I was just I was just being a troll about the situation. I don't know why y'all took it so serious, that type of shit. Oh, man, get the fuck out of here. Yeah, that's annoying. See, that's what I miss I'm about old play. schoolness. Like, trolling would have got you punched in the face back in the day. I would say sometimes, <laughs> sometimes trolling is like playing the devil's advocate. Only when you're actually doing it for that. Yeah. There's ways to do it correctly. But there's too many folks now that they're not trolling as devil advocates. Like Aaron said, they're trolling to, to elicit likes. Or yeah. some kind of response from people, whether it be negative or positive. Yeah. Because I mean, it doesn't matter Pretty these days if you. Yeah, because I mean, if you if you're on YouTube or if you're on a platform that needs a whole bunch of views or likes, 
everything good or bad, and that's part of the issue too. It doesn't matter if you're good or bad. All the attention is turns into good attention. Because it all means the same thing for you. So, you know, that's really stupid. But whatever. I'm trying to the rest of the statement to me. People keep feeding into this shit. It's whatever. So, um... Yeah, we're um we're all we're on a time crunch today, so we're we're gonna make we're making this shorter, a little bit. Right. So um in the interest of time, uh, next week's homework uh, element show, which is graphing, tagging, writing, or graffiti artistry. So all those things are still graffiti artistry. You know what's interesting? I think, I think that's, I think that's more uh, prominent now today than um, actual like b boy or dancing. It uh, is. It's had a resurgence. Yeah. 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 But there's so many documentaries on graffiti. Um, you can watch Star Wars. Star Wars has some elements of b-boying, but most of it was about graffiti art. Okay. And you can watch Wild Style. You can watch a silent film almost called... It's called Sections of the Elevated. And it's almost nothing but a bunch of train cars just being filmed that, that have been um, written. They've been graphed. And they just go by and just look at them. And you can also, of course, um, look at Graffiti, A Children's Guide to the Origins of Hip Hop, The Five Elements of Hip Hop, book number four by Lamont Clark. Because once again, if you don't know anything about it, that children's book means shit. You just read it. <laughs> <laughs> it makes an excellent gift. It, it, hey. <laughs> and it, it and it and it also educates you at the same time. But no, Wild Style is a really good movie to watch. You can watch, you can even watch B Street if you want. Mm-hmm. B Street is a good movie to watch if you want to see some graffiti art. And you can see, um, you know, spoiler alert, you can see somebody you know having to suffer for their art in that movie too. Yeah. That's something that you don't see a lot of when you see these graffiti documentaries. How what? some of these people, you don't see how some of them lost their lives. Mm. Doing that. It's dangerous. Yeah, true. Yep. Because they would do it on um, the train cars, and if you fall. hurt yourself or you fall on the third rail oh man are you doing it yeah electrocute yourself but they did it so yeah those are good things to watch and um yeah. you know you know it's you know it's you know it's a crazy thought i just had and i don't know i was thinking i probably should save this <laughs> for the next episode what but, um uh-huh. And we talk about this a lot too. Like you got a lot of people nowadays, like especially the younger generation, that take stuff out of context. Like they don't, they don't respect the context of certain things. So like watching a movie like B Street or Wild mm-hmm. Style, and like mm-hmm. seeing these people do all this, and like you said, risk their life for their art. And you know what I'm saying? It's like, well, these people weren't getting paid, and like that, you know what I'm saying? To them, that looks stupid. Like to them, they'll look at that yep. and be like you know, like. Like that that whole situation is stupid. Like they didn't have to live like that and they didn't have to do that type of stuff and why didn't they just you know what I'm saying? It's like that, they have that no money, clue what artistry is. They don't know what it is. Right. It's that it's that money culture we live in. If it's not some type of dollar sign attached to it, it looks stupid to everybody else. Well, it's because money commerce has overtaken to, like overtook art a long time ago. And once that happens in any art form, people don't understand what people were doing before. They're like, what the hell were you dying, like living and dying for that shit for? 
Exactly. Like that's what's crazy about it to me. And the, and it's like the reverse effect now with rap music and hip hop because nowadays you got people that's like, you know, a long time ago, like just you know what I'm saying, going to the parties and rapping on the mic and, you know, getting little to no money, if any money at all. It was like, you know, stop wasting your life and all of that type of stuff. But nowadays it's like it's like the thing. It's like, you know, if you wanna if you're going to go and rap, you know what I'm saying? Like, you might as well do it the way Cardi B doing it because she getting paid. And it's like, as long as she getting paid yep. for it, why you why you mad at her? Like, that's and that, crazy. And that whole song is her acknowledging that, oh, by the way, I stole Kodak Black Pole Flow. <laughs> it's crazy. Like, she literally named the song Bodak Yellow. Because instead of being black, she's yellow. Of course. And 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 the Bodak is because she's Cardi B instead of, you know. Mm-hmm. I was floored when I heard. It's basically right. entitled, "I Jack Your Style." <laughs> and they're from okay person, with it. Like from, he, he's okay with it though. He's okay with it. Right, from a person whose style not even that attractive to begin with, so <laughs> it's like, and, yo. And, and let's not get into the things about Kodak Black that are not attractive. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, his style, his style is definitely one of them. But okay, so we were watching rap critic. We were watching rap critic though. How rap critic? So rap critic said, by the way, he was all pissed at Dram for using the term broccoli as we alright he's pissed about him using the term broccoli like he did but no. you don't care that Cardi B jacked your entire flow right <laughs> I don't even I don't understand somebody explain these up to me I don't get it that's weird that's weird I mean, is he just doing that because that song just fucking blew up? So he's like, oh, I'm cool with that. I don't know. I don't know what these, I don't know what these weirdos be on. I don't understand. (laughs) I just be lost. (laughs) Like, I don't get it. I don't even try to anymore. I'm just like, you know what? Good. Good for you. But not, but bad for everybody else, though. Yeah. Yeah. Bad for, bad for... You know my ears that don't want to hear that. Mm-hmm. Speaking of Bad speaking of a, speaking of assault on your ears, what do you think of um the Lupe and the Royce John? Oh, I you haven't heard that all the way through yet. I haven't heard that all the way through yet. Mm. What's that? What did you think? The uh the ones you sent the uh it was the layers it wasn't layers one of them and murals was the other one. Yeah yeah yeah. Oh, I, didn't, yeah, I didn't watch it all. I didn't watch it all the way through yet. What did you think? Yeah. Now I've heard. I've actually heard both of them already, like twice over. Um, mm-hmm. I'm more. I'm more partial to the Lupe John, like just because I like. I like um Tetsu and you, and I. It's, I couldn't really it's, get into. I like. I like Tetsu and you. It's different and it's weird and it's like yeah. um. Yeah, Lupe take you to another place on that John. But it's not my favorite Lupe John, but I like it. Um mm-hmm. as far as the Royce John, mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know about the Royce John. And I and like I said, I, I'm not really usually into that hundred bar stuff. That's why I asked you Mitchell what she thought, because I'm not into that whole, you know, why? one verse, no cut straight through type stuff. Like I don't you mm-hmm. know what, I I that's kind of throwback. Cause like I you know, I that's some shit I just that's the kind of shit you fucking did back in the day. You know what I mean? Like you. Yeah, like but it was different. When you started. Go ahead. I, I yeah, but it was. But it was different that, back then. Like that's the, in reverse. That's the reason why I don't like murals. Because to me, it's just like you say, just rapping. Mm-hmm. I don't think yeah, it bothers yeah. me. I don't know. I feel like it was different back then. Back then, I feel like it would be like. Like, even if you listen to, like, and I hate to use that, this as the example, but Rapper's Delight. Like, if you listen to Rapper's Delight, 
Like the mm-hmm. way they do it on the way they do it on there is always something they run they go it's always a line or something they go back to that was like that took place earlier in the song, even if it's but not But it's not uh, really the the chorus. It's something that's exactly. Bringing back. Yeah, exactly. Right. It's not oh it's not a chorus, but it's you know it's what I'm saying? Some it's some form of like a uh, repetition, like hotel, motel, holiday inn that keeps bringing you back. Uh-huh. Right, right, yeah, and they do it with like more than one thing, so it's right. It, it's, it's, I feel like it was like that more so back in the day than it is now. Nowadays, you know, people just like, you know, they trying to out rap each other, so it's like, you know, how many bars can I fit into, you know, like four or five minutes and shit like that. So well, that's know. the rapidity rap part of it that that I do think that kind of like that part of. It would be like, oh mm. man, come on. Like with that part, I get it. Yeah. But I mean, here's my question about repetition. Cause after watching that mirror stone where he compares Dodge effect <laughs> they want effect to the Migos Versace. Yeah, that's crazy, ain't it? Um does he know how many times the Migos repeat Versace? <laughs> and how was saying bum stickity bum stickity bum once compared to saying Versace like eighty times in a record? Mm-hmm. Like I like I that's a false equivalent to me. Equivalency to me. I don't understand how those are the same. Right. And I feel like, like, and even, like I feel like even I feel like even back then people knew what was going what was a fad and what wasn't too like um like when you look at like uh like what you were saying about how Jay Z hopped on the you know the um the whole uh uh African Afrocentric, you know yeah, Afrocentric yeah. consciousness train like you know what I'm saying mm-hmm. like people could tell that all right you know you could tell who was genuine about it and who was just riding the train for a minute you True. know what I'm saying. So like when you hear it, like he try to compare that to what everybody else doing, it's like oh well you got everybody sitting up talking about who biting who styling nowadays. But like you got people like designer that's living off of you know what I'm saying whatever future did and you know what I'm saying. Yep. Like back then, like people was like, all right, I see what you trying to do. I mean, you know you what I'm saying. Get, you didn't you really, get you didn't really out go on for the rails it. Like, that shit. No, nobody went for that shit. You, you just didn't. <laughs> right. Um, part of it, I think, too, is I was talking to my boys earlier today that I like to talk to hip-hop about, and unfortunately, like, it probably peaked during the golden era, and there really wasn't anywhere else to take it after, like, and so, like, once it, the commercialism seeped in, after you can't innovate anymore, it's like, what else do you do? Right. See, and that's that's what I was saying about, and I know y'all was on my top about the whole Irv Gotti thing. I wasn't agreeing with him, but I was saying is that I've thought about that before what he said. Not in the same context exactly, but like, I've thought about like how a lot of people, like a lot of artists, they might mm-hmm. feel like they standing in the shadows of what came before a lot of times, and a lot of times they just sitting there like, you know, well, every time I turn around, I'm getting compared to Nas. Every time I turn around, I'm getting compared to mm-hmm. Big or rock him and that type of stuff mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying and a lot of and a lot of people try to step outside of the box for better or worse and a lot of times it might turn out some other way not to say that you know it's going to go as far as like somebody like amigos or future but like a lot of times you know you got people that- well apparently it is aaron because we have amigos in future <laughs> yeah but <laughs> But I was just saying, like, that was something that I've thought about before, because, like, when we talk about, like, peaking and, like, you know, what the what the bar, how, how the bar was set before, you know, whatever came. Um, but I'm never going to say like- the bar was set too high, and that, and again, it's a point that, that okay, the bar is not ever going to be too high. The bar being high and then nowhere, that we don't have anywhere else to go after that is definitely a a solid point because once you've innovated all you can do and then you can't really do much else but that happens in every art in every art form period in every musical art form it's happened it's just that the messenger the messenger 
was A, misguided, and B, wrong. It was the wrong messenger. We're not going to listen right. to the pandering Irv Gotti who allegedly. Right. Because I feel like, you know what I, I feel like? His, yeah, I feel like his argument was more so. I feel like his argument was more so based on record sales. Like, you're not going to get. You know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of times you don't see artists hitting the same, like, levels as far as, like, record sales, album, album sales, like, as they did, like, you know, back in the day or, like, and then promotion, promotion is not the same. Uh, video production isn't the same as it used to be. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, it's, yep. it's that type of stuff I feel like he was talking about. You know what I'm saying? He's talking about the more money aspect of the situation. And he's talking, because why would he be talking about the artistry? Uh, yeah, exactly. Daddy, <laughs> talking about the artistry. And that, that's my point is, you right. can't listen to him talking about how high the bar is because he is not talking about the bar of artistry in a positive way. He's talking about that shit in a way that that shit hurt his fucking record. Because he went, my friend told me, he said, he went on and on and on about how much cash money is now making. And how mm-hmm. cash money has made more money than every other hip-hop record label ever. Right, exactly. But that's all he cares about. Like there's yeah. no artistry in, in this conversation. Right. Cause you got cause you got people that'll argue that a lot of times too. Like people that sit there and argue, you know what I'm saying? Like, well, you know, it's people like Master P that a lot of people like, you know, when you talk about like purists and uh, the culture and stuff like that, people don't generally we don't talk about Master P at all. But you know, you got people that's more about that money culture that's just like, how come nobody ever talk about him? You know what I'm saying? And it's like, well, we're not going to talk about him for the reasons that you want us to. You know what I'm saying? Right. No. Well, you know what? The big deal about somebody like Master P, at least Master P understands what it, it is that he is. <laughs> right. Yeah. Ain't that crazy? <laughs> like, he's not going to inject himself into some conversation of art. Like, he knows what it was that he was doing. He like and we he, discussed he this made before. A, he built an empire off. And they all were for, all these folks we were talking about were former drug dealers. And as my friend and I were saying, as we always say, Aaron, they dragged their drug dealing aesthetic into the culture and they left it. Mm-hmm. And they yep. said, "Oh, by uh, the yep. way, here." Yep, that's exactly that's exactly what's going on. It's just like when we talk about down south, like with the whole uh, with the strip club culture. Yep. But but Jay Z and Biggie did that, and they popularized it. They were great. They had skills. They did not have skills with that. Right. <laughs> but see, everybody who was looking at them is like, oh well, I don't really have to have can still make a hot record and that's how that shit went it's like well i can have a little less skills than jay-z and then the next person was like well i can have a little less skills than this one well i can have a little less skill and now here we are go that yep <laughs> <laughs> yeah but thank you all for joining us here today we went on one of our epic why we hate modern day hip-hop rants <laughs> We don't care what you say, Mirrors. We can. We can talk shit about people in hip hop. Talk about you can't you can't kick them out of hip hop. We can talk shit about you as long as we want. It's a free country. No. Oh, uh, and don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was first. I was depressed about that shit, and now I'm depressed for a whole other reason. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, we hope you join us next week for our third element. Um, and the next week we'll be graphing slash writing slash tagging graffiti artists on the element show. And school is officially out. <laughs>